Hello, this is Jane Goodall, and I'm feeling really sad that I'm not with you in person today. It's the first International Day of Peace that I haven't been in New York for many, many years. But I'm with another group of wonderful young people in Atlanta, and we're all thinking of you today. So I think right now it's really, really important that we start thinking about how are we going to create a world of peace? Because we're living in such dark times. There's war and violence everywhere. And not only are we harming each other, but we're harming Mother Nature too. And everywhere, we're destroying forests and other habitats. We're polluting the ocean. And we're in the middle of the sixth great extinction. I don't think we can ever have a world of peace until we learn to live in harmony with Mother Nature. Actually, we're part of the natural world. We're not separate from it. We depend on the natural world for clean air and water and food. And yet, with our reckless burning of fossil fuel and with our, with our uh, industrial agricultural farming, with the industrial farming of animals in these terrible factory farms, we're creating these so-called greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide and methane, that trap the heat of the sun and cause the, the globe to warm up. And this climate crisis that we now know is everywhere. It's all around us. It's affecting everyone is something which we really, really have to try and do something to slow it down. Or else your future is in jeopardy, so we must act. And there's three main problems. And first of all, it's the terrible poverty that so many people live in. Because if you're really poor, you're going to cut down the last tree in your desperate effort to feed yourself to to grow more food or to make some money. You're going to catch the last fish in the ocean because you have to eat. And then there's the unsustainable lifestyle of the rest of us who have more than we need. And in many places, we're using up the finite resources of the natural world faster than Mother Nature can replenish them. And on top of that, we have a growing human population. It's about seven and a half billion today, and it's estimated to be 20 point, uh, no, in 2050, it's estimated to be about 9.2 billion people. How will Mother Nature cope? These are things that we simply have to tackle. And when we think about the problems of the world, I think we, we feel sort of helpless and hopeless and many people simply don't know what to do, so they do nothing, and they fall into apathy. But I believe the most important message that I can give all of you today is that every single one of you, every single one of us, makes an impact on the planet every single day. And if we think about the little choices we make, what do we buy, what do we eat, what do we wear, where did it come from, how was it made, did it harm the environment, uh, did it lead to cruelty to animals? Is it cheap because of child slave labour or sweatshops somewhere else? If we all start making ethical choices, even small ones, collectively, this will start to move us towards a better world, a world where we're closer to living in harmony with nature and with each other. So what must we do? Well, we can boycott companies that produce their products in ways that harm the environment or increase poverty. And so do the other products that we choose to buy that are made more ethically, do they cost a bit more? Maybe they do. But then we will value them more and we will waste less because the waste on the planet today from the rich nations is truly shocking. The size of the landfills the way we buy stuff that we don't really need and then we cast us aside while other people are living in poverty. And then we must support those politicians 
who are desperately trying and working to make legislation, to make laws that will protect the environment. And so often people are elected into government and then when they make these laws it means that we have to tighten our belts and then people stop supporting them and so the politician changes. So fortunately I do believe there's a window of time when we can change, when we can slow down climate change and my reasons for hope it's first of all all of you because everywhere I go in the world I find young people who understand the problems, who are empowered to take action and are literally changing the world every single day. And secondly, there's the resilience of nature. Places that we have destroyed give them time, give them perhaps some help and once again they can support uh, nature, plants and animals can return, may not be the same as before, but it will be an awful lot better. And then there's these amazing brains, and I've met people who talk about new technologies, amazing technologies that would have been science fiction when I was your age, and now they're happening and they will help us uh, live in greater harmony with nature. And in our own lives, we're thinking about our own individual ecological footprints, trying to step lightly on the planet for the sake of tomorrow. That's the problem that we've made. We've made choices that benefit me now, my next political campaign, the next shareholders make meeting, instead of how will this choice benefit future generations and help the planet today. And finally, there's that indomitable spirit, which means that people tackle things that seem impossible, and they won't give up, and they succeed. So there is this window of time. If we get together, we can really slow down climate change and create a better world for all your children and grandchildren and theirs. But we've got to get together and take action now.